Okay, I think we can start. So good morning, everyone. Um, I've sent the organizers the slides of uh, yesterday, and they should they now will be concatenated with the 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 slide from the first day. So the the file that you will that you should find on a website is contains the slide of the first day and the second day. So you have everything. You should have everything in one <clears throat> in one big uh, big big file. So uh, I have changed the order. So the, the plan was initially to have the exercise this afternoon, but I think the, the exercise fits better now and you're all fresh and uh, 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 very energetic this more, the more, in the morning. Um, and so it's probably better to, to have the exercise session uh, now. So uh, what I will do is first start with a very short uh, introduction on halonuclei, the things that I've not been able to do uh, yesterday, and then and then we'll 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 start for the exercise. So the goal of the exercise is um, is uh, to study the elastic scattering of beryllium ten and eleven on zinc sixty four at uh, twenty four per point five. Uh, 0.5 MeV. Uh, so we have data, and the goal is to try to analyze them and to try to understand them uh, in in the framework of of uh, of halo nuclei. What is going on? It's not working. What does it? So I I will I will start with this short introduction or continuation of the introduction on halo nuclei and then and we'll, and then we'll move to the to the exercise session so these slides i put these slides up <clears throat> yesterday so it's just to remind you what halo nuclei are so it's basically light neutron rich nuclei it's it's less and less light nowadays so the the we go to heavier and heavier system so up to uh, nin 31 probably uh, for example has been suggested to be a p wave one neutron halo nucleus so we move up in the chart but this is the chart and yes but for carbon 22 uh you have the the one neutron halo nuclei in in, in yellow barium 11 we'll focus on that today then carbon 15 we'll see this afternoon an example on on that on that nucleus and then you have the two neutron halo nuclei uh, helium six, lithium, uh, lithium eleven. So, as 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 was mentioned by uh, Daniel the uh, the other day. Oh, now it works fine. Um, and so the problem is when you want to study these beasts, uh, they they are uh, quite short lived. So, barium eleven has a half life of about thirteen seconds, which is quite short. And barium eleven, you 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 go down by three orders of magnitude. It's around ten milliseconds. So the, the the closer you get to the drip line, the the shorter the the half life is. So you you need to. It's very hard. You can't do a elas, um, electron elastic scattering on on these nuclei. Uh, it's it's well un, un, until Scrit works better at 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 uh, rip in uh, in Japan or or we have a finally an electron ion collider. Uh, with with the radioactive ion beam, so the goal is you go to your favorite radioactive ion beam facility. You produce the nucleus that you want. It's a very difficult complex. Uh, it's it's a very difficult um, method. I won't go into the details. And and then you send you send the, the nucleus that you have produced onto a target, and you look at what happens. And so one thing that you could can look is the elastic scattering. That's what we have discussed so far. Um, and so this is exactly what we will uh, do today. So look at the elastic, exactly that reaction, the 24.5 MeV per nucleon. Uh, and, and this is what we, we will going to analyze today. So I won't discuss that now. I will discuss it later, once you, you have worked on this. And then you have the... The, the next step would be the knockout reaction. So it's a reaction usually performed on the light nucleus, so carbon target if you work, if you work at weekend, beryllium target if you work at MSU. Um, and what you do is, is you remove at high energy, you remove one neutron from, from, from the uh, 
from the incoming nucleus, and so you form barium-10 plus X, meaning that you don't measure anything. So you just measure what's coming out. And, and as we've seen yesterday, you have a, a momentum distribution for the remaining nucleus, which is a signal of uh, how extended uh, the, uh, the neutron core uh, wave function is. Another way is to transfer. And so the, the, the best way, the, the best kind of transfer is this reaction. You send a barium-10 <clears throat> on the deuteran. You pick up a neutron, you form barium-11, and, 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 and you're left with a proton. And when you measure these guys and you look at the cross-section, you get information about the nucleus that you have synthesized. Okay, So you transfer a neutron, and you look how you transfer a neutron in which partial wave or which orbital angular momentum you, you, you transfer the neutron. And so that gives you an information about the structure of the nucleus. Um, and finally, uh, you have the elastic breakup, and that's what we are going to discuss today in the afternoon in the class. Um, and so you sent the beryllium 11 on a target, here in this case, a lead target. It breaks up into its core and the neutron. You measure the two, so it's 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 a... Uh, it's a um, it's an ex exclusive measurement. You measure both uh, both both nuclei, both clusters uh, coming out of the of the reaction, and, and and you try to get information about the structure of the incoming nucleus from that cross section. And this is something we will discuss. Uh, to, yeah. Um. The, 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 the difference is the X. So in the one neutron removal, so in the knockout reaction, you do not measure the neutron in coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, but experiment is the physics, okay? So it's, yeah, yeah. there are a few experimentalists here. So and, well, my wife is an experimentalist. So usually she says, yeah, yeah, the theory is, yeah, but the, the, the physics is the experiment, okay? But it's what you measure. And um, what, uh, the, the difference between these two processes is that this process is part of this, this reaction, okay? So it means that uh, parts and a big chunk, actually about, for helionuclei, it's about 50% of that cross-section is actually this kind of reaction where you have, we'll see later today, the two, the two, the core and the fragment uh, and the neutron um, dissociates and they survive the reaction. But there is one channel in which the neutron does not survive the reaction. It is absorbed by the, by the target. Okay, so you imagine you have a core and a neutron and you have your, your target and the neutron arrives and it has a, a deeply inelastic reaction with the, with, with, with the target. And so it's even if you had neutron detectors around, you would not be able to measure the neutron. The neutron has been absorbed by the target. And so the cross section for knockout is always larger, about, as I said, about a factor of two compared to the elastic breakup. It's much simpler to perform, so you don't give a shit about detectors, but detecting neutron is a very difficult process because it's uncharged. So you need you need detectors. It's it's really it's really difficult. So you you have people doing doing that are doing a, a great job because it's 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 very difficult. And so performing that reaction, that's one of the first reactions that was actually performed to study these nuclei. Um, and so uh, but this one is more is it, because this one is much more complicated. The cross section is higher and it's easier to perform because you don't have to measure this neutron in coincidence. So this is part of the knockout and you have the whole inelastic, what we call the stripping component where the neutron is absorbed by the target and the core flies in, in a straight in well straight ahead and so you detect the core and so you get it's 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 a different reaction process even on the theory side you have to include both channels and this is this is a challenge actually nowadays to really include a dynamical description of that stripping process so so here is the knockout so that's an example from Tamauman. uh he did that when uh at, at msu published in 2000. This is the parallel momentum distribution. So it's a count, so it's not an absolute cross-section. Um, it's And so it's the number, so you, you start with beryllium 11, you send it 
that was at MSU, so it's a beryllium nine target, uh, and then you send it on on the beryllium ten, uh, and 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 you you measure the beryllium ten coming out, the gamma, to be sure that the beryllium ten is in its ground state, and then you don't care about the what remains of the beryllium nine or 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 or, or the the, the neutron. And so what you see here is this power momentum distribution, typical power very narrow power momentum distribution, in L equals zero. That so that would be an S wave neutron. Um, and then the calculation, uh, probably performed by Jeff Tostevin at the time, um, with L equals one, it's the dashed line, and the dot dashed line, it's L equal two, e equals two. So what you see is, depending on L, the signature is the the width of of the distribution, and so and so you can exclude uh, these this possibility just uh, by looking at the at, at, at the cross section. So this confirms the presence of a halo. Why? We'll start the exercise now. So why L equals one or two give a broader distribution? So we've seen yesterday, narrow momentum distribution means broad spatial expansion, okay? So basically, if you have a broader power momentum distribution as seen here, you must have a narrower distribution of the nucleus. And why L equals one or two gives a narrower distribution. Yeah, so it's it's the presence of the centrifugal barrier in the potential. Um, so the to to the if you remember the there was in the first class, so you have a you 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 add to the to the depth to the well to the potential. So in your so you have your potential well, and you add a centrifugal barrier, so you force the neutron to stay inside. Okay, you you squeeze the wave function for the neutron. So the the neutron core wave function in L equals one or L equals two is squeezed. It's narrower, and that means that um, that means that the power momentum distribution will be broader. That that's the reason. So you can really that's a very nice tool to make to make sure that you get uh, that you get the the to to have an idea of of the value of the of the of the orbital angular momentum in in, in beryllium eleven. So you can also do <clears throat> transfer reaction, and you get actually the same kind of yeah. Um. You can see it as a tr as a Fourier transform of 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 the uh, of the wave function. Um, I have no idea what 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 it what it shows if it if it's related to a kink somewhere in in the large distance um, of the radial wave function. I I have no idea, but it's yeah it's a good point. Uh, but I've always seen for L equals two something something like that. So. Uh, uh, and I think when we did a calculate some calculation, we also had some a, a sort of a, of a of a dip there. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a, an interesting point. We should uh, it's it's a small momentum effect, so that would mean large distances. So it would be something at a large distance in the wave function. And so this is an experiment performed by Schmidt and collaborators at Oak Ridge. It's a um, once in a lifetime experiment because they didn't use a radioactive ion well they use a radioactive ion beam of course because barium 10 is radioactive but they didn't start with the usual technique uh to produce the the, the beam what they had is a they they they, they had a spec uh, uh, a mass separation of barium and they they, they they got barium 10 so the half-life is ten thousand years or something like that so you can you can actually 
produce it and keep it in a bottle for a while and then use it for the reaction. So they had an, more than 99% pure beryllium tin beam. So it's a very clean experiment. So they send that on a deuterium target and then they, they, they transfer the neutron to the beryllium 11. And so that also has a strong sensitivity to the uh, to the orbital angular momentum. And what you see is that they reproduce quite well the, the data with these calculations. Um, the, the difference between the red solid line and the blue dot line, dotted line is a difference in the optical potential choice. So they use Chapel Hill, so one that we've seen yesterday, and uh, Koning de la Roche. And unfortunately, they extract a spectroscopic factor. Uh, and they got different value depending on, on, on the kind of potential and on the, the beam energy. So 12, 15, 18, or 21.4 MeV beam energy, uh, deuterium energy. Uh, and and uh, and so they, they, they got that. So you can also confirm the halo structure of beryllium 11 thanks to that. And so the breakup, something that we will study is the following. Uh, this These are the cross-section uh, measured by Fukuda and collaborators. This is a recan experiment at about 70 MeV per nucleon, uh, published in 2004. So this is the breakup cross-section on lead. This is a breakup cross-section on carbon. What you see is that the first, you have a very large cross-section. So it's a lot of the order of barn per MeV. So it's a very large cross-section. And that reveals that the system barium 10 plus a neutron is very fragile because it's, it's loosely bound. And so it, it reveals somehow the structure of the nucleus, uh, the, the structure of, 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 of the nucleus uh, when, when it's bound. And um, so also, as we've seen yesterday, you have these bumps which correspond to resonances in, in the spectrum of, of uh, barium 11. So we'll see, we'll see that uh, later. So you, you, need, you need a good model of the breakup to properly analyze these, uh, these experiments. And this will be the goal of the, of the class. Uh, of, of the rest of the class. Now, now we've, we've, I've, I've presented you these, these halonuclei and how they were produced. And so what I suggest is we start with the exercise. And so uh, Alessia Di Pietro and collaborators, so she's from uh, Catania, uh, Laboratori Nazionale del Sud, and uh, she went to Isolde at CERN and they measured uh, the elastic scattering of beryllium 10 and 11 on zinc at about 24.5 MeV. So it's a rather low energy. And uh, these data are, so you should have received, well, you have received a zip file containing many things, including the code, uh, input files, but also the data files. So you have these two data files uh, barium 10 zinc E25.x and barium 11 zinc 24, uh, 25.x. And these two contain um, the, uh, the, the, the elastic scattering cross, uh, cross sections. And so the goal is to reanalyze these data within the simple optical model that we've seen yesterday. So what they say is that the barium 10 zinc optical uh, Elastic scattering is well reproduced by an opti a quite simple optical potential. So there is a, a volume real part, an imaginary volume part, there is a, the Coulomb part. And so what I ask you to do first is this is the data file that uh, is in the zip. Um, and so which should give you this, this, this is an optical potential that describes the elastic scattering of boron 10 on carbon 12 at 18 MeV. So you take that file, you change by, you change the, the mass, the charge and the mass numbers of the projectile and, on the, and, and, and the target, you change the beam energy, and you put this new potential here within, within, within the system, and you run that code. The first thing is to check that you have converged. So there are basically three important inputs. First is to compare, to make sure that it has converged in the sum over the orbital angular momentum. So you check that L max uh, in the input file is large enough that, so that you don't have any change. Um, so the, the code runs in about two seconds. So you can, you can do a few check, uh, a, few, a few tests. It, it should run quickly. Um, then you should check that the, the mesh, the radial mesh is okay. So an R gives you the number of 
mesh points, uh, radial mesh points. HR gives you the step. So is the step large enough? Uh, do you go far enough? That's the kind of question. You just just check that. So doing three or four uh, calculations should should give you make sure that the code has compared, uh, converged, and then you can compare to uh, you can compare to uh, to the data. And um, so what I suggest is that you start working, and then if you have questions, if you have problems, just call me. Uh, you can work in small group if you want. So if if you have one. If 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 the code doesn't run on your computer, just look at your neighbor and uh, work with them and make sure that uh, that the thing uh, that the thing work works. So call me if you have a, if you have a problem, and then we'll we'll move on. So the idea is first to make sure that this works and that what they have produced as optical potential works and describe the data, and then we'll move to analyze beryllium eleven starting from that potential. Okay. Good. So I will I will switch off that projector and uh, use the blackboards to answer questions or, or write comments. I will leave this one open. Uh, so in the zip file you also have the questions, so you can you can move around. Uh, so just 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 one comment uh, on on the the potentials. Um, so the potentials have, as as we've seen yesterday, the potentials have usually that shape. So but the problem is the radii that are there, the radial that these are the other radii that are programmed in the code that you have, but usually experimentally produce the potentials as function of this reduced, uh, reduced radii, radius. And so you have to account for the, 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 the square, the cubic roots of the mass number of the projectile and the cubic root of the mass number of the target. So you, you can't just plug in the code uh, the values that we've he that you have here into into the code or, or RC. You have to account for the fact that the masses um, here between beryllium 10 and zinc 60, uh, 64 are different from the one that you have in your input file that, that is given, which is born 10 and carbon 12. So that's 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 an important po point. Otherwise, you will have, you can try it, then you will see, you will have weird results. It's, it's this one, okay? Because you are, you are nucleus or nucleus. This is used for nuclear nucleus optical potentials. This slide is, is already on the, um, on, in, the, in the file. So if, if I can have your, your attention, I've already answered the question a few times. So um, yeah, I can keep explaining to each one of you what, what's the issue. But um, the, um, the potential that is given here gives you the radius but it's the radius, the reduced radius of 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 the of the the, the Rutherford. Um, Rutherford has this kind of shape here, and that's the radius. So the the inflection point that you have here is given by the Rutherford radius. So it gives you basically the size of this interaction, and the value that is usually given by by experimentalists or people who fit the potential is always given by the reduced radius, which should be multiplied by the sum of the cubic root of the mass number of the projectile plus the cubic root of the mass number of the target. And the reason people do that, it's not just to annoy you, but also because this should be this is this is a this is reminiscent of the liquid drop model, if you remember. Beta vice theta. This is really re reminiscent of that, and we know that the the size of the nucleus should be around 1.2, 1.5 times the the cubic root of the mass number if the density is constant. And so, 
it's easier to compare for different systems the radius just by looking at this reduced radius, which should be around 1 to 1.5. Sometimes it's a bit smaller, sometimes it's a bit larger, but it's easier to compare them to each to each other and to know what is a real value. So you don't you need to include that. If you don't do that, what will happen is that your potential instead of being here will be here. And so at this energy, and because of the Coulomb repulsion between the nuclei, uh, they will never come close to each other, never feel the nuclear interaction. They, they will be stuck at large distance. And so you will have a cross section, which is basically Rutherford. And so you will have the fourth column of the output file, which will be very close to one. So pay attention to, to that. This is something where we've all been, we've all that joke, we've all had that joke during our career, but uh, yeah. So uh, time flies like an arrow, and so we're moving on. But uh, and I've already seen very nice results uh, by by some of you. So most of you have been able to reproduce the data. So this is what you should you should re you should get. Um, so it's it's the. Um, so these are the data from uh, Alessia Di Pietro, and the solid line is is the, the the result converged. So you should you should you get a good agreement with the data. That's that's the point. That's what you should you should you should have obtained. Now the question is, um, they also measured the, the same result for uh, barium eleven. Barium eleven is just one neutron away from barium ten. So um, if you, when you don't have a, an optical potential, you take something similar, it's the same beam energy, it's a barium nucleus, so the same charge. So what can happen? The only thing is you keep exactly the same potential. The only thing that you change is the radius by this formula. So you change this radius, and then you compare to the data that they have measured for barium 11. Does it work? That's the question. So um, there is only five minutes to go before before the break, uh, and I, I don't want to delay too much. So if you do the calculation, so as I mentioned, the only change, you keep the same depth. The new close barium 11 is close to barium 10. So you keep the same depth. Uh, you just do the change for the radius. So you, you change AP from 10 to, to 11. And then this is what you get. Um, so you have a cross section. If you compare to the other cross section, you get something very similar. So there is no no significant change. But there is there is a loss here. You do not reproduce the data. In the data, actually, you don't see this this Coulomb rainbow. So you don't see this bump here in the in the in the scattering. And so the question is why? Why do we have such a reduction? So someone mentioned it's it's something to do to the uh, something to do with the the uh, the structure of barium eleven, which is true, because that's the goal. What has what's the difference between barium eleven and barium ten? Sorry. Yeah, it's a halo, so it's very fragile. It's loosely bound. So the one neutron separation energy for barium. Uh, 
10 is something around 6 or 7 MeV. Uh, the one neutron separation energy for barium-11 is half an MeV. So it, it can break up very easily. So the, the beam energy is way above the threshold. So you have enough energy to break up the system. What happens if you, if you break up the system, if the cross-section is large, then you lose flux from the elastic scattering. And that should explain the small difference that you hear, okay? So the, 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 when you compare the data with, with barium-10, you have a significant reduction. This is due to the fact that you lose the flux from, uh, from, from, the, from, 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 the, from the elastic channel. Now, the question is how to simulate that. And one, what was mentioned by someone here is you add the surface term. The surface term in the imaginary part, this WD, gives you a, a term which is really at the surface where the halo is. And so the first natural thing is to say, okay, I put uh, with the usual diffuseness and I put the depth in this case up to minus 100 MeV. So way larger than what you have for the others. And you get, you get the green dashed line here. So that doesn't work. It's not, it's, it's not enough. What happens is that because the halo is so extended, it has a, a very extended wave function. The diffuse net should also, of that surface term should also be very large. It's actually not my idea. I think it's the idea of uh, Angela Bonacorso, uh, whom you've met last week. And so uh, if, you, if you take the binding energy of Berlium 11 and you compute uh, the, 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 the slope of the wave function, of the, the, the halo wave function, you get something around 3.2, I think they took 3.5 in the data. And if you take a, a rather small imaginary surface term, 0 0.8 uh, in depth, you get you get this magenta dash dotted line, which agrees very well with, with, with the data. And so that confirms the hypothesis that uh, uh, Alessia Di Pietro and collaborators had to explain that loss of flux, it's due to the presence of the halo. And so the halo, if you add it, if you simulate it as a surface, a diffuse surface term in the potential, you can reproduce, you can reproduce the data and you can, you can, you can go nearly through the data. There is a small problem here, but that's, that's fine in, in this, in this very simple, simple model. Okay. So it's right the time for the, for the break. Yes. Um, I've not tried, so try it. So you have 15 minute break to try and then show the results. But it's, no, it's typically the, 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 that kind of stuff that the, the Alessia and collaborators work to try to understand that. So they came up with that idea, but of course you can also say that it's, it's a larger radius. So we just need to in increase the radius and see what happens. So this is a test that you could do just increase the, instead of taking 1.1 or 1.2 here, take 1.5 or even two firm. He's saying, okay, it's much larger and see what happens. And then, and then you'll see if, if, if you can reproduce the, 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 the data with that or not. Okay, good. So, and yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, I will come back to that in this afternoon uh, in, in a much more precise, accurate model. And so we'll see wh whether that, that appears or not. Okay. So I'm still available for to answering your questions. If you want to continue and play with the code, then we can discuss uh, either this afternoon or or tomorrow if you want and you can you can try and, and 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 play around so thank you for coming so early in the morning enjoy the break and then uh, the lecture of uh, Jérôme Margaron
I, yeah, I want, want to make an announcement uh, that to, uh, tomorrow there will be a strike